Okay, joining me right now is Robo Global President and Chief Investment Officer Bill Studebaker. Bill, great to see you. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. What do you think is behind this nervousness on markets? Listen, you know, nothing goes straight up. We've had a pretty prosperous last few years. I think this is just a digestion that we're going through the market. I mean, think about six, nine months ago, it was no growth, low inflation forever. And now we're going into kind of Elon Musk rocket mode in terms of economic growth and expectation for better productivity. So I think this is a trade off that we're seeing and the markets are digesting this. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But I mean, you, you still have a very strong backdrop. I mean, for this quarter, the third quarter, we're expecting earnings to be up 21 percent. So is there a reason to still put money into stocks? We think so. I mean, we think that as we look at Ray Robotics Auto Automation, artificial intelligence. This is really the future trade. This is the fang trade. Um, interestingly, year to date, I mean, our index is off around 10%. Our index trades at 19 times forward earnings. This is for technology. So we think that the opportunity is really ripe, and we look at the signs for what's happening in terms of AI and robotics. There is not a sector or a company that can't benefit by improvements that these technologies provide. Yeah, if we were to see the growth after the close tonight from companies like Microsoft and tomorrow with Amazon and others, Susan Lee, that could create some stability for this market. We'll see what technology delivers. I think it really it depends on sentiments right now. It's so fragile. And yes, I would say it would be encouraging to get some good report cards from the likes of Microsoft. Tesla would be one as well. In these earnings season, Maria, you know this. We see outsized gains, outside losses. So let's see how, it, uh, how the numbers turn out later on today. And, and, and you're, you're talking uh, really, Bill, about a different way to invest in terms of robotics. I mean, you're talking about AI and robotics. How does that apply to investing? Well, in terms of investing, I mean, this is really, again, kind of where the future growth is. I mean, I think everyone now looks back at the Internet and kind of wishes, why didn't I see that? The Internet was amazing because it was disruptive in how, it, you know, how we socialize, how we consume media, brought about search and e-commerce. Amazing disruptive. But that's it. What's so exciting about robotics and AI is it in the process of being rolled out and touching every industry every market, every economy. And so this is early days. And again, this is where we see the future growth. How, how, tell us about Robo Global and how investors uh, trade and invest through Robo. Okay, so we're actually an index company, and we actually were the first company five years ago to sort of believe um, that we are on the cusp of ubiquitous automation. At the time, five years ago, there wasn't a mechanism to invest in robotics and AI, so we created our own proprietary index, and so we license that out. There are ETFs uh, and other investment products that correspond to the index. In the U.S., there is an ETF ticker is Robo that invest across the entire value chain of technologies and applications. How are the flows right now? Are you seeing outflows as a result of the nervousness? What are people gravitating toward in this environment where they're worried about growth? Well, we've definitely seen outflows. I mean, I think this is off a pretty tremendous 2016-17. The index in 16 was up 19 percent. Um, in 17 was up 45 percent. Year to date, down about 10 percent. So clearly, you know, we're seeing some nervousness around trade policies in the economy that's um, you know, necessitate some people to make a move. So. And, and there's also nervousness around the Federal Reserve. Jason, the president, is doubling down once again uh, at the Federal Reserve. The president telling the Wall Street Journal in a new interview this morning, the Fed chief Jay Powell seems to raise rates every time we do something great. The commander in chief even going as far as to say that he may regret nominating Powell to position in the first place. Before he gets to you, Jason, your reaction to that bill? Well, I mean, it's, it's, I think we've had one way to go with interest rates, which is clearly, you know, go up. We've had a sustainably low level of interest rates been for at rock too bottom. long. So I think this is just an adjustment we're going through. Your, your thoughts, Jason? I, I think it's classic uh, Donald Trump when he wants to put uh, pressure on somebody. He calls it out and pushes it. I do think in Washington, D.C., no matter what happens in the House and the Senate, I think one of the pressures that will be out there uh, will be the deficit. It is uh, Republicans have given up that mantle of fiscal discipline. Uh, I'm in favor of the tax cuts. I do want to make them uh, uh, more permanent, but you're going to have to curb spending, and that's something Republicans, when they had all the controls, of le all the levers of control, have not been willing to do. Yeah, and yet the president is preparing a 10 percent tax cut to the middle class, he says, Jason. The president said that because the government is doing so well, he can pass along the savings to the middle class. Here at the Oracle Open World 2018 conference in San Fran, I sat down with Oracle CEO Mark Hurd and asked him what he thinks about the newest round of tax cuts.
I think policies have been helpful. So uh, to be very blunt, I think the, the tax cuts are helpful. That said, I think getting that money back in the hands of particularly small and medium business who's benefited the most. I mean, remember, most comp companies don't pay 15%. Most companies, you know, uh, uh, I think, you know, my old company at HP, we sold, we, we uh, our tax rate was zero. Um, GE is roughly zero. And so in some cases with international companies, multinational companies, I'm not sure 15% is accretive to the U.S. government. Now, that said, when you get to small and medium business, this is a pure, pure benefit. Bill, the, the point he was making was that it's small and medium companies that are soaring right now, those domestic-based companies doing much better than some of those large global companies that are dealing with tariffs, with trade issues. And, and perhaps they now, now are losing their deduction, but they had all these deductions putting them at a zero rate. So they didn't need the tax cut plan. Right. Well, I think, again, this is kind of an adjustment we're seeing. Um, it's hard for me to offer... Um, a lot of uh, insight into the tax policy, but clearly there's some big companies that have benefited because of tax situations, and I think we're seeing equalization. I mean, I think some of the things that are happening are positive. And Susan, one factor adding tension to the markets, this decline in foreign buying of U.S. Treasuries. The Journal writes about it this morning. Foreign buyers holding their lowest stake in Treasury debt yeah. in 15 years. So it's a $15 trillion market, Maria. And it looks like foreign buyers maybe increase their buying of U.S. Treasuries by $78 billion in the first eight months of this year. So their holdings, it used to be half 50% of all outstanding U.S. Treasuries back in 2013. Now it's at 41%. And there's a bit of an unwind taking place with the stock sell-off that we've seen. And any concerns uh, from, from your standpoint in terms of China holding so much U.S. paper? Well, I, I think it's a risk, but I think, you know, China is pretty tethered to what's going on in the U.S. I mean, you talk about the U.S. having an adjustment with the economy and stock market. Look at what's happened with the market in, in, in China. So I think that they need to play their cards uh, pretty carefully as well. All right, we'll leave it there. Bill, great to see you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Bill Studebaker joining us.